from the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering HoshoCon 2018, brought to you by Hosho. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live with theCUBE in Las Vegas for the first security conference. It's an inaugural event. It's called HoshoCon. This is where security experts are gathering to discuss the future. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with Joe Kelly, who's the co-founder and CEO of Unchained Capital. We're just talking about the old days and big data. Joe, good to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Good to see you too, John. Thanks for being here. So Thanks take a minute to explain what Unchained Capital is. We heard some people talking this morning on some earlier news about your business model, love it. Take a minute to explain what your business model is, what you're doing that's different. Sure, so Unchained Capital, we're a, really a financial services company, I'd say, kind of of this, this new era where you have this challenge of um, you know, users of cryptocurrency want to custody their assets themselves. They want to maintain some degree of sovereignty over and control over the, their money, not just give it, relinquish it wholly to a bank or someone else. Um, so it's an interesting, time to start a, a business like ours, and our first product is loans. We give uh, out dollar loans and US dollars to individuals or businesses who provide cryptocurrency as collateral. So right now we accept Bitcoin or Ethereum as that collateral. Um, and we do accept it in a, in a fully kind of custodial manner today. When, when you get a loan from us, you're sending us your Bitcoin, you're trusting us to mm -hmm. keep it safe, and we do. Um, but we also have some more kind of multi-signature models that we'll be releasing soon that uh, we work with, for instance, Hosho here on, on getting our smart contract on an Ethereum audited for, for doing such a thing with Ethereum, but really trying to find ways that bridge that gap of users don't have to quite give up everything, we don't have to have full control, but we can still, as a lender, safely extend money and, and know that we can so you got a lot of couple things going on that's yeah. been, been topical here at this conference. Yeah. We've been hearing in the hallways, there's been sessions on it around custody. Yeah. So that's one yep. big issue that everyone's talking about, but it's also now you're lending. Yep. So there's collateral, mm -hmm. that's services, financial services. Yep. So it's a little bit of FinTech meets cybersecurity needs. Yeah. You're in the middle of two crosshairs. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing this? I mean, I think, uh, so as we were talking about earlier, you know, we, my, my co-founder and I kind of cut our teeth in the big data technology space and uh, learned a lot through that, learned a lot especially about how easy it is to uh, get caught up in either a hype or a uh, market cycle where you, you don't pay as close attention you should to kind of customers and what, what, what they need. Mm -hmm. you know, we went through a pivot in that business, which uh, was, was, was good, the right thing to do, but we wanted to start this company consciously in a way that we didn't have to pivot. So it always has been this kind of focus on the yeah. customer and the end user and what they want. Hey, building a sustainable business. And building sustainable hey, business, with yeah. paying customers. Yeah. Thing. What a great idea. Who's a thunk, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out it's a good call because with the whole bubble bursting, you know, in February really, I think February to me was the month where yeah. you saw the decline, so security the token, li li rightfully so is the discussion, role of utility, all this stuff's regulating now. So a little bit of a, kind of a dark time for us, but the, yeah. the winners coming out of this will be the durable, real builders. We think so, yeah, and that, you know, we didn't, we chose not to do a token sale last year to our, uh, maybe in the long run it could be a bad idea, but we still feel, we feel pretty good about it. It's a good call, actually. Um, yeah, SEC reported today, I saw it today, SEC is actually having some ICOs give money back on violations. As they should, So yeah. you would have been probably optimizing your time on other non-company building activities. Yeah. Yeah, running around Asia, managing stock prices, or <laughs> token prices. <laughs> no, it's a shame, it's like these, these small teams by now, like 12 or 20 people, are almost running public companies in terms of the demands and opinions and Yeah, and they're young, they got to they, they they keep their eye on the ball, which is value proposition evolution um, and also security. Yeah. All right, so talk about how, what you're doing here. Why are you here at HoshoCon? I'll see you know, they're <coughs> a supplier, partner with you guys. Yeah. But what's, what's, what's the story here for you guys? So we, uh, we got to know Hosho earlier this year as we um, had spent about six months developing an Ethereum smart contract. So in Ethereum, um, it doesn't have a native multi-signature mechanism. There's no way that within the protocol you can um, speak to the protocol in a way that says you need multiple signatures to make this transaction valid. Unlike Bitcoin that has a multi-signature spelled out. So, uh, and we, and with the way we store cryptocurrency, we store it all cold storage, we store it with multiple hardware devices, and, and so, and we believe the only way to do that, or the only way to store cryptocurrency is with that and with multi-signature enabled. So, to try to- To make, minimize the risk on the custody side. To minimize the risk, of, yeah. Of, yeah, on the custody side. Also, you minimize risk of, of theft, you also create some resiliency in the, in the sense of maybe a key is lost, like you've got some backup keys to it, so um, really important to get to that multi-sig status, but as you maybe saw last year with hacks like, uh, the, there's a parity multi-sig wallet that was hacked to the tune of some hundreds of millions of dollars. And 
Um, there's there's several of these, these multi-sig contracts that people developed that were really sophisticated pieces of software, allowed ownership to be transferred or things to change within the contract that in our opinion kind of didn't need to be there and, and put the contract at risk. Um, and so we worked on this very simple, bare bones, uh, smart contract that uh, does multi-sig as, as closely as you, it's kind of already spelled out in Bitcoin and worked with Hosho to audit that. We, it's been since audited twice, both times passed with flying colors, no, no issues, not a single um, discrepancy. So you did the work up front. Did the work up front, yeah. Got That's a critical. Really smart team of folks that, that put that together. And uh, so yeah, we're, we're a very security conscious company. We like you know, being present contributing conversations like those that are here. And it's funny, we were talking earlier in some interviews, it's like, security's a differentiator for some of these exchanges. <laughs> hey, we got better security. It should be table stakes like, in some way. Yeah. Differentiator, that's like standard. Yeah. All right, so talk about how someone uses your service, because I think this is mm -hmm. fascinating. A lot of people are holding crypto, they may or may not want to sell it, there's also fluctuation risks. Yeah. So how does this system work? I give you my crypto, mm -hmm. and you lend me money? Is yeah. that that simple? Yeah. So, you know, user signs up, to our website, uh, we, we lend mostly in the U.S., a few international jurisdictions, but um, as long as you're in a jurisdiction we can lend, you finish out your profile with us. We do do a KYC AML check on, on folks, and then you put in a loan application, and within that loan application, we can either lend to you at a 35% loan to value or 50% loan to value. You get a slightly better interest rate on the lower LTV. Um, what that means is if you'd like a you know, $100,000 $100, loan, say, you need to provide maybe $200,000 of that collateral up front in the form of Bitcoin or, or Ethereum. Um, we can fund loans, and you can go from basically a new account and application to a funded loan in like four hours even. You know, it's had that time, a client signing up to us, wiring them yeah. money. Um, and so that, that you know, it can be a pretty fast process, which is really unlike a lot of any other loan products. Even if you get an unsecured loan on a, on a website, yeah like an earnest.com or some of these, it can take you many days, a week or more, sometimes to close a loan. So you're taking a big risk with this, you guys. Are. Um, well, you could say I mean, that. I mean, I, well, I mentioned that. it depends on the fluctuations, 50% right? LTV, we do do margin calls, so if there's a 25% price drop, we'll issue a margin call. It means the client is required to post more collateral, or else we can declare the loan in default. Uh, luckily, we've had no defaults. We've never had to force a liquidation so for anybody. So let's explain the margin call real slowly. Yeah. So, okay, it drops down below a certain percentage, say 25. Mm -hmm. You do a margin call, if they don't come up with the colla more collateral to refuel essentially the collateral, yeah. you can default, which means you take ownership of the crypto. Yep, in that case, we would take ownership of the cryptocurrency, yeah. we would sell what portion of it uh, was needed to pay off the principal and interest, and then they'd get the remainder. Um, but yeah, thankfully, nobody's ever got fully bailed on us in that way. Yeah, not yet. Uh, <laughs> not yet. Well, so like, to me, this is a great service, so great for people to get some hands on some, some fiat mm -hmm. uh, cash. Um, now on the back end, I'm only imagining, just my, my brain spins around, you got a lot of hedging going on, you got to have math, a lot of math behind it, maybe it's big data. How are you managing the back end? Because now on your risk profile, mm -hmm. so you got the margin call, you got some mechanisms, which is great. Mm -hmm. What's going on in the background? You got to crunch your way, some cloud computing, Amazon compute going, okay, where are we with our position? There must be some math involved. Math. What's going on behind the curtain? Can you tell us a little bit? I think you'd be surprised. I think that uh, you, we, we've been able to manage pretty well with I mean, just more heuristics and kind of common sense around a lot of this stuff. I think while we did up front before we even and gave a first loan, did a lot of research on historical volatility with Bitcoin, looking at, okay, what are the most significant drops within a day or a week long period? And, and based on that analysis, that's where we did come up with this sort of 50% LTV ceiling for us. Yeah. It says really, you know, 9.999 or 99.99% of the time, there, you'll never see anything that that mm -hmm. big within a day, maybe a week. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll have there's been a couple weeks where Bitcoin will go down 50% in, yeah. that, in that period. Um, but that's that, that evolves on like a human reactionary kind of time scale, not yeah. something that. You're well, today about the my... stock market dropped 800 points today, Bitcoin didn't move. So I mean, it's good that there's no correlation, yeah. but, but the point is you're measuring it. So is there, the question, next question I have for you is, I'm thinking about myself, I was a customer. If I was a customer, do you provide like some sort of total cost of ownership calculator that I yeah. would have to know, okay, because I want to plan, I don't want to be defaulted, right? Mm -hmm. So I should have a good understanding of how to manage it, so I give you guys some crypto for the loan, yeah. I got to have some reserves. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see a formula for that? Is there benchmarks or is it more of uh, ad hoc kind of general? Kind yeah, of, it's definitely, know. I mean, on a, in some ways a case by case basis, but with, you know, with every client we recommend that you not, of course, leverage all your, your cryptocurrency. You do want to leave some in reserve for um, a margin call and um, it just depends on person situation. You know, how and much the margin call too, doing. if they give the money back, that's fine too, right? So either pay yeah, back the exactly, loan. Yeah. Or pay down, pay down principal, which you can do a partial payment. We have no prepayment penalty. 
Uh, so pay down some principal or yeah, post more collateral. Just some way to get that ratio back, back. Cool, back how's business health. going? Good, yeah. We think um, you know, it's been a, a great year for us. The, the first half was, was pretty bananas, honestly, just with the, the kind of bull run and tax season and stuff like that. Summer's been a little slower, but uh, we're still you know, bullish. Tax season, like yeah, roll your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome to the tax bill. Yeah. Trading all that crypto. <laughs> yeah. People had a wake up call. Let's argue that what killed all the volumes is finally people realize, oh my gosh, you know, I can't do 1031 going forward. You know, I have to pay taxes every time I trade an altcoin for another altcoin. I think that really dampened volume uh, this year. All right, so I got to ask you, what's going on here in this event for the folks that didn't make it? What are some of the conversations? A lot of diverse, smart people here, yeah. kind of a core kernel industry security but it's not just security nerds, it's total you know, players on the security side to mm -hmm. business. We had Andre on talking about you know, custody, you've got your business here, financial mm -hmm. services with blockchain. Yeah. What's some of the hallway conversations that you're overhearing and that you've been involved in? Let's see, I mean, all in all it's just been, it, the, you characterize it pretty fairly. I think there's, there's real engineers here, people that um, you can kind of get in debates with over the pros and cons of, uh, of the different programming language or implementation for smart contracts. So it's kind of a definitely more nerdy conference. I haven't heard of one like ICO I should buy into Thank or any, anything yeah, like yeah. that. You Thank know, so God. It's pretty nice. It's refreshing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the ICO contest a little bit over the, along, along on the tooth there, don't you think? Yeah, it's the conference we deserve. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the tagline. Yeah. Yes. All right, so what are you seeing as the major trend that's going to bring back, um, not bring back, but establish more of a mainstream culture with crypto? Because um, you're actually getting into the level of services that you know, certainly for the early adopters and insiders that are pinned there from the mm -hmm. beginning or, or involved now making money and having crypto, you know, to Joe Sixpack mm -hmm. out there who's you know, really is interested in the, and certainly the younger generation loves this. You can't. You can't, you can't pull a 16 year old away from figuring right. out how to mine, getting involved. Yeah. And pretty much anyone under 30 pretty much is on the crypto bandwagon. Yeah. It's a revolutionary kind yeah. of cultural shift. Especially in our customer base, very, very well overrepresented there. So yeah. how does it get more mainstream? I mean, I think, uh, speaking somewhat biasly, you know, part of, part of our view is that you know, we're a company that's here to make cryptocurrency more valuable in the long run to its holders. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to, in dollar terms, be, be more pricier, but uh, the idea that before us, before other people doing this, this kind of loan business, there, um, there's really nothing else you could really do with your Bitcoin. If you could buy it, you could hold it, and then go trade sell it. it later. You could give it to somebody else, you can kind of trade it, trade it for back for fiat here and there. You could trade it for other altcoins. Convoluted or you could, process though. Yeah, all these things and that are, not, not, don't have much to do with your daily life, you know, except for you, know, you buy a car maybe and that person will accept Bitcoin and things like that. But, you know, our clients are buying homes, they're investing in uh, real estate, they're investing in businesses, and paying off credit card debt, things like this. So. What are some of the sample loan sizes? What's the average coming in? Our average is $120,000. What's the largest? Largest is over a million, yeah. Where are you guys getting the cash from? So we have uh, uh, some investors, um, including some small credit funds and institutions, uh, high net worth individuals that have, have pledged to, to back loans from us. Mm -hmm. um, so financial pros who get the collateral game. Yeah, totally. You, you really got to be comfortable with Bitcoin <laughs> as an asset to then you know, be comfortable with uh, the kind of rates we're, we're talking about here. Because many traditional lenders, they want 20%, 30%, I don't care, it's, it's the riskiest asset there yeah, is, yeah. And they just don't get it. So you're building a company, you got a company builder, pragmatic, which is good, but also you got to manage the, the wave that you're on, mm -hmm. which you know, is high growth and potentially, so you're managing growth. Funding, vision, what's, how is the execution plan? What's the tactical execution plan for you guys? I mean, it's interesting, I think, uh, we're talking, even again, back to the big data conversation, we, we really started that, at, at the, as we joke, that the smartest thing we did was start that company at the time we did, that uh, no matter what kind of happened or steps of missed execution, we were on kind of that wave, and so in some ways that informed our philosophy here, uh, but so it was, you know, start a, a business at the, the right time in a good state space, um, build a valuable long-term business in there that's focused on clients, which for us has meant you grow the value of and the utility of cryptocurrencies that, that people are already holding. So uh, make cryptocurrencies really into the most useful assets in the world, which they should be. They're software, they're, mm -hmm. um, they, 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 we know they can do more things than what they've done for us maybe necessarily in the last 10 years. So um, going forward, I've, I mentioned the, the, the loan product we have. We have some storage and cu custodial technologies we've, we've got that we'll be releasing soon. Um, things that help you keep them, keep cryptocurrency safe while consuming products like a loan from us. So, um, and you're based in Austin. Yeah, based in Austin. How many people on the team? 
uh, 16. So it's a small, small team. Yeah. Growing great. Congratulations. Thanks, John. And if I need a loan, we'll come knocking on the door. Give us a call. <laughs> we need working capital. Cube is growing like crazy. You're going international. I like it. Going crypto. <laughs> Joe Kelly, uh, co-founder and CEO of Unchained Capital. Check them out. This is theCUBE. Bringing you live coverage here at HoshoCon in Las Vegas. The first security blockchain conference uh, in the world. We'll be back with more after this short break. Thank <laughs> you.